Five years ago, screenwriter Nick Vether was plunged into real life drama when he woke to find his baby daughter cold and struggling to wake. Terrifying. Uh, thankfully, the panic was short lived and she was okay. But the 999 call that Nick made that day has inspired a new thriller, The Control Room, which starts on BBC One on Sunday. Let's have a look. Could you give us your exact location? We might still be able to do something. Listen, listen, listen to me. Forget, forget everything else. You need to know exactly where you are. To arrest me. To, to see if there's anything that can be done. What's your name? I'm not gonna tell you that. You can make this right, you know. I didn't want to do this. It was just, it was just your mum. I was so scared. I'm holding a good thought for you, okay? I swear. What? What? Oh my God. Do I know you? I'm guessing yes. You do know them. Exciting. I mean, <laughs> Maybe. If there's anything that's going to make everybody watch, it's that clip there. What a cliffhanger. Uh, yeah. We're joined, everybody, by the writer Nick Leather and also, also Inda Kastiger, who we just saw in that clip. Morning, both Good of morning. you. Good morning. Nick, uh, this is inspired by something that actually happened. Tell us what happened. Yeah, it, it was just uh, one morning we um, went to wake my uh youngest daughter up and we couldn't wake her up and uh she was sort of floppy and her, her hands and feet were cool and so my wife said call an ambulance and i called an ambulance and i was a bit of a wreck and um you know and I, and, and they start going through all the questions and i just desperately was you know saying just send just send us an ambulance just send us an ambulance and in the end she was absolutely fine. She was fine by lunchtime that day. Sometime later, when I sat down to write a story, it was that intensity of that conversation and the person on the, on the other end of the line and how they were sort of an everyday hero and had calmed me down and talked talk me through it. And, you know, and, and then, then the sort of anonymity of it where we know, we know nothing about that person, yet I, I was so thankful at the time. And I you will remember that person for the rest of your life. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I wondered if that connection, that sort of relationship and the intensity of that call might be a good starting point for a story. And Ian, clearly it is, isn't it? That role. It's, it, it's like Nick was saying, it's like a, an everyday anonymous superhero in a way, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, Nick makes a good point that it's kind of like, it's the invisible facet, really, of the emergency service. And I actually went into some control rooms, there's some research beforehand. And I have to say, I was a little bit ignorant. I didn't really know much about it. But you'll be humbled very quickly if you listen into some real life calls. Um, and what Nick does amazing is he starts off with that scene and it's just relentless from then on. There's no, yeah, there's no time to catch a breath. So yeah, if you're a fan of thrillers, this is for you. Yeah, we really put Ian through the mill. Yeah, <laughs> well, what he did is he wrote this really sympathetic, lovely, uh, sensitive, a very vulnerable character, and then he put him through hell for three hours. Yeah. Television. <laughs> wow, it's very cruel, actually. Yeah. And Nick, you, you actually always had Ian in mind to play this role. Is that right? Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you not know that? I actually found that out yes uh, yesterday or the day before. You heard the rumours. Yeah, I heard the rumours. Yeah, yeah, it was my first uh, ever conversation with a director. She said to me, Gabe, who's the lead character. She said, uh, and director is Amy Neal, mm, Ace he's director. Fantastic. Um, and she said, how do you picture Gabe? You know, what do you actually see in your head when you're writing? And I said, I see sort of uh, that Ian de Castica, do you know, that actor, I see that. <laughs> that and Ian so de Castica. They, there you go. That, <laughs> that must be lovely to hear. <laughs> oh, it's very nice. Yeah, I don't think I've, that's ever happened to me before. Probably will never happen again. <laughs> so I'm guessing you have, you're the call handler and we see the everyday drama, if you like, that, that becomes normal for these people because it's, it's, it's their day job, isn't it? Mm. But there is a backstory then that we have. Yeah. One of the, a taster one of, of. I mean, look, Nick's an amazing thriller writer. 
Um, but one of the things, if I could be so bold as to say, <laughs> is I think he's also romantic. And at the heart of the story really is this love story, a very complex, dynamic, and multi-layered love story that I think people from all walks of life can identify with little bits and pieces of it. Um, and that I, that's the thing, one of the things that really attracted to it. And also the character and other characters in it, they have, there's a theme of uh, being stuck in the past and having things in your past that you can't quite, are still with you today and you can't quite confront. Get off your back, get, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think everyone in different degrees can, yeah. can relate to that, so, yeah. Oh, and Nick, sure. a lot of it is about trauma, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And how that, you know, that has an effect through people's lives and through the years. I think that's it. That that call at the beginning, the, the call that we saw there, it actually takes Gabe back into his past and it's about dealing dealing with things he's, he's never dealt with. So as much as he's an everyday hero every day, helping people through their emergencies, he's never dealt with his own emergencies. And I guess you are multi-award winning BAFTA, RTS winner. I guess in your dramas, what you seek to do is make the usual extraordinary. So as you were saying, those traumas that many people will have gone through, but with that added layer of what is not necessarily realistic. So it's combining the two, isn't it? So people can identify it, but with the added drama. Yeah, and also what one thing we tried to do with it, which I hope we succeeded, is like sometimes in thrillers, you have an ordinary same person in these extraordinary circumstances, and they just seem very cool with it. Yes. <laughs> and in this one, what we really yeah. tried to do is like me personally, if, some of, if, if half of these things happened to me, I'd be in my room having anxiety attacks yeah. in bed, curled up with the doors all locked. And so we tried to have a bit of a flavor of that, didn't we? I, I think, think that's it. In fight or flight, we're definitely both flight, aren't yeah. we? Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, you know, if, if they hear over thrillers, sometimes <laughs> you watch it and you think they're enjoying it a bit too much. Yeah. 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 And no, we'd be let's terrified. Run away. Yeah, that's let's it. Run, let's that's all it. run away yeah. immediately. I yeah. think Gabe definitely does not want to be in this story. No. Right. And I, and I, yeah, and I think like the real life version, yeah, is seeing someone in that thing having, having a panic attack, can't breathe properly, you know, can't, you know, it's just, it's too much. I mean, because those people are making decisions every day in a split second yeah, that is literally life and death. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did I, you spend a lot of time around them as well? I did, and, uh, uh, you know, straight away, you, we was, I was given a control room contact and to run everything by them. Um, and whereas Ian actually spent a lot, quite a bit of time mm. uh, in a call room. Did you ever get to meet the call handler who saved your child's life? No. So they just remained anonymous? No, not at all. I, I hope they see this. I know, I was going to yes. say, hopefully they might be watching. Yeah, that'd be lovely. I think I've heard those dodgy northern films <laughs> at some point Can I actually, before. on that note, can I give a quick shout out to, um, there was three control rooms. Um, Paisley Control Room, Edinburgh Control Room, and the Cardonald Control Room that were all extremely generous and lovely. And were they all cool as cucumbers? Oh yeah, and that's yeah. the thing. I mean, I, the first call I listened into, I think a woman had dislocated her knee or broken her knee, and she was screaming down the phone, and it's, wow. shock, it's shocking. And the woman on the other end was, I mean, the whole thing is you need to stay calm, get the relevant information so you can get the appropriate help. And she was so cool, and I just think it's much easier said than done. It's true. When you go into those rooms, they're all so calm, the voices are calm, but you can feel the tension, yeah. can't yeah. you? You can feel it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what yeah. we see, I think, in that clip with you. I have to say, Ian, you are, without doubt, the first person on this programme that I've seen who's been allowed to put their foot on the desk. Sorry. <laughs> I know, I'm so sorry, my mum. And, and, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's nice yeah. that you feel at home. I, I love do, it. you guys are lovely, thank you. I love that you I feel so relaxed. I was going to lie so down at one point, it's too early in the morning. <laughs> Shall we get you a little rug? A <laughs> little uh, blanket? I'll just stay here, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's so great to see you both. Thank Best you. of luck with it. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's amazing. Great. I, could feel, I could feel my adrenaline oh, going yeah. just I, watching that clip. Yeah, palpitations, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we should say the control room starts this Sunday at 9 o'clock on BBC One. All three episodes will be available as a box set on BBC iPlayer at exactly the same time.